38 years. 38 years. All right, let's, uh, there we go. Let me pray for Tom, and, uh, and then we'll, we'll begin. Father God, thank you so much for my brother Tom here and for his willingness to, to share with us. And, um, God, just to enter into your presence and allow, allow you to work through him, God. He's been such an important part of our church, and so we're so excited to hear what he has to share with us this morning. Open our hearts now, Father. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. So nice being with you. Movement. We're going to open with this first session with the movement of the Spirit. So, um, in first slide. Okay, so we're pulling several pieces up here at one time. So I want you to focus, first of all, on the battle that we're in. We are in a fight, guys. And this is a serious fight. It's a fight between our earthly nature and our spiritual nature. This is a life and death struggle. And so I've, I've chosen from Colossians 3 just a representation of those two natures that are at battle, that are in a fight. There are other places that record similar uh, descriptions, but I've just chosen to outline it looking at these two. In 31 years as an elder, I've sat many times on the front pew during the invitation song with people who have come forward with difficulties in their lives, asking for prayer, spilling their hearts. And the people who stand out to me of all of those are the folks from Anchor, and for a very particular reason. Many times I've sat with those people, and, and as I talk to them, I, I, I realize that they think, I'm the worst person in the world. This is awful. Nobody's like this. Nobody's as bad as I am. And so I, I've said to these people before, I want you to turn around and look at all those people back there singing. You know what's the same about them that is true about you? They all have their demons. They look fresh. They look clean. They look dressed. They look happy. They have demons. They experience the same struggles that you do. They're in the same fight that you are. And you know you're in a fight. Here's what's different about you and them. Some of them don't know they're in a fight. They don't realize it. Now, in this fight, I have good news. God is doing his part. He's redeemed us. He's given us his power. He's given us his spirit. We're here talking about, in this first session, the movement of the spirit in your life. His, God's intent that the spirit guide you. But I play a part as well here, I think. And I've picked only a couple of passages. No, no, not yet. <laughs> My part is, James chapter 4 talks about me submitting. It talks about me resisting the devil. It talks, about, it talks about me coming near to God. That sounds like my part. And God doesn't do my part. He's doing his part. If you look at, at Ephesians chapter 6, it talks about putting on the armor of God. That sounds like that's my part. Arm yourself for the battle. Now, I want to break this down a little bit, so now let's go to the next slide. And I love this passage in Romans, Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. There are two pieces, and here's what I want to compare and contrast. The, this is what I think the two sides of our part are. The first part is in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, where it says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world. And in Ephesians 4, it talks about putting off the old self and putting on the new self. That whole passage is, I think, is entitled in most uh, testaments, the new creation. Put on the new creation. Put on the new self. Then it's followed by all of these behaviors, these conscious choices that we make. And I'm, I'm just going to pick out a couple. It says, if you've, been, if you've been lying, stop it. Tell the truth. You've been stealing, quit. Go get a job so you have money to give somebody else. You can help others. Now, that's the pattern in Ephesians 4. Stop this, start this. And if you look at the research around the way the brain works, you can't stop something and not fill that vacuum with something else because the old creation, the old creature, will just be sucked right back in that vacuum. So this is, a, this, is a, this is a pattern that I see throughout the Bible. Instructions from God that say, stop this, start this. Don't do this, do this. The contrast. That's the conscious part. That's the conscious side of my part, I think. But then there's another side. 
there's the unconscious part, the subconscious part. And I think in the second part of Rome, at that passage in Romans, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's the subconscious part. Now, do I do the transforming? No, God does the transforming. Uh, 2 Corinthians 3.18, we are being transformed into his likeness. We are being transformed. Here's the thing, in the movement of the Spirit, I've got to let the Spirit in. There's a part that I play. I've got to enable, invite, let the Spirit work. If the Spirit's not working, if I'm not inviting him in, God can't transform me. So I play a part here. Now, I've got a bunch of scripture here, and you can just kind of scan through those. But I want to, want to drop down to Colossians 3, 2. Set your mind on things above. This is the subconscious part that I think we deal with. This is my side of the transformation process. Set my mind on God. Set my mind on things above. Now, here is a, here is a characteristic of human nature. We are what is called teleological. We move toward things. We don't move away from things. And we can talk about stop this, stop this, stop this, but that doesn't take us forward. We move toward things. So we've got to fill our lives with positive things. So if we look at that Colossians 3 passage, what are we going to move toward? The mind of Christ. That's what we set our minds on. Set your minds on Christ. That's the picture, that's the operative picture that we're going to follow, that our subconscious is going to follow. The subconscious is an autopilot. We set the direction, mind on Christ, that's where it's going to take us. I want to tell you that God has wonderfully created you, every one of you, to be his people, to be his man, to be God's man. Now, so what's, so what's, where does this, where do we get hung up on this? Here's what we get hung up. If we don't have the mind of Christ, we have something that is from our earthly nature, that's what we're going to follow. That's how we're going to see ourselves. Now, Justin has affirmed shame. He's saying, you're the glue. That's an affirmation for him. You're the glue. I would just tell you, Shane, that you may want to change that affirmation at some point in your life. And at some point you want to say, no, I'm not the glue, I'm the leader. Maybe he wants to change that vision. But here's the thing. Once we have that picture fixed, that's what we move toward. Next slide. Here's some examples. Take Moses. Moses said, I, I can't lead these people out of Egypt. Well, who am I that I should do that? Because he had a picture of himself from his earthly nature, not the picture God had of him. God is saying, oh, no, no, I got a different picture of you. You're my leader. You're going to bring these people out of Egypt. He said, ah, I can't do that. And I want to tell you, for him to go on that mission when he believes he's incapable is nonsense. We will not pursue things that we believe are nonsense. And I'll get to us and some examples shortly. The ten spies came back saying, look at this, we seem like grasshoppers, not in their eyes, in our eyes. My mind is, there's no way. I'm a grasshopper. How can I fight these big guys? And I'm telling you, if they then, with that picture of themselves, moved into the promised land to fight those, those giants, it would be nonsense. Number three, Peter walking on the water. When he lost the picture, he started to sink. As long as his mind was set on the master... He said, the master's here. I can walk on water. As soon as he saw the storm, as soon as his picture left the master and looked at the danger, he sank. The one talent servant, I knew you were a hard master. You reaped where you didn't sow. And so I was afraid, and I did nothing. Look, if I believe I'm working for somebody, and it doesn't matter what I do or how well I do it, I'm not going to be rewarded. I'm going to, in fact, be penalized. I'm going to be punished. It would be nonsense for you to even try. Why would you do that? So, next slide. What are some of the implications for you and me? Look at this. You may never reach out to share your faith story if, you've, if you view yourself as a failed product of God's handiwork. Why would anybody care about my story? I'm a failure. God, God's failed on me. Why would, why would anybody benefit from hearing my faith story? And if you believe that, if that's the picture, you will not share your faith story. You'll move in a different direction. You may never experience the abundant life if you continue to believe that God could never love or forgive a person as miserable as you. 
and you're going to move toward everything except the experience of that abundant life. You may never appreciate God's redemptive sacrifice if you only focus on the shortcomings of your performance. I failed again. Oh, I just can't do this. If that's what you're focusing on, you will never, ever appreciate God's redemptive power. I grew up with a, a leader in my small church, country church, and there's a passage that says, you, uh, uh, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Remember that passage in Romans? Let me tell you how he quoted that passage. Now, as a 15-year-old, this, this is how I'm being tutored in the Bible. Here's how he quoted it. You shall know the truth, and your obedience to the truth shall make you free. That's a different gospel. And if that is the picture in my head, I will never, ever appreciate God's redemptive power. All I will see is my failure. You may never, you may never, you may never, you fill in the blanks. What is it when my mind is not set on Christ? What's not going to happen for me? What's not going to allow, what's happening that does not allow the, the Spirit to move within me? Next slide. So, this is the, this is, what we're going to do now in the next few minutes is easy to say. It's harder to do. But this for me is part, this is, this is my side of that unconscious, subconscious transformation. Number one, I've got to affirm God's vision of me. Justin is affirming a vision for Shane. Good for him. I love him for that. This is who you are. This is who you are. Now, I'm going to tell you something over the next, uh, you, you're, you're gonna, Shane, you're going to actually get tired of this. But every time you pass one of these men now, they're going to say, hey, glue. Hey, glue. And that's the best thing we can do. We have got to affirm God's vision. Now, um, in, in the mid-1980s, I was digging into some of this, this Romans passage, and it suddenly struck me about this, this affirming, what's God's affirmation for me? So I, I, didn't, I didn't look at the Gospels, I didn't look at Acts, the book of Acts, I didn't look at Revelation, but Romans through Jude, I started recording all of God's affirmations of me. And I have a collection of 190, and I'm sure I missed a bunch. 190 affirmations that God has for me. Next slide. Here's a sampling. These are all, this is part of that 190 collection. I, I want you to look at some of these. I'm justified. Oh, man, I don't know. I just, I, I just can't seem to get it together. You're justified. God's affirming you. You're justified. You're dead to sin. You have the aroma of Christ. Why wouldn't somebody want to hear my story if I believe I'm the aroma of Christ? He's affirming that for me, not through my power, but through his power because he's doing his part. Mature, eating solid food, confident, unashamed, spotless, blameless, full of grace, worthy of the kingdom. Aren't those amazing affirmations? And God, you read, read through those, those books and you're going to see that God is affirming us this way. So I've got to affirm myself the way God affirms me, not some other way, not by the earthly picture but by God's picture. Next slide. So I've just picked three to represent that chosen, forgiven, empowered. The second thing is you have to imprint that vision. Now, how do you do that? Repetition. I have a friend who says, in terms of influencing other people, I'll give you the truth, and I'll take repetition, and I'll beat you every time. But isn't it amazing here that we not only have access to repetition, but we have the truth? And the truth is, God has affirmed us wonderfully. God has affirmed us as his people, chosen, forgiven, and empowered. But I've got to imprint that. How do I do it? Repetition. You've got to be in the Word. You've got to meditate. You've got to pray. And you can't do it occasionally. It's got to be repetitive. That's why I said Shane's going to get tired of hearing this word, hey, glue. And I'm saying to you, don't get tired of that. It's just that people kind of trying, just trying to be maybe humorous, but not knowing that you are affirming him in a really good way. In the word, meditating repetitively. You do it once in a while. It sticks and it, it drifts away. It's almost like a stage hypnotist. I, a stage hypnotist can plant an imprint that is momentary and will, will allow this person 
or cause this person to do certain things on the stage for a, a little while, but those, those imprints fade. Uh, it, hypnosis is used for smoking cessation, but it al almost never is done in one session. It's, it's repetitive sessions because you have to imprint it more deeply and more deeply and more deeply before it is the operative picture. I'm a non-smoker. That's my picture. But that doesn't happen quickly. It happens repetitively. So this is, this is the discipline part. Be in the Word. Meditate. Pray. Constantly. Number three, confirm the vision. And this happens a lot in the way I talk to myself. Now, this doesn't make a lot of sense, maybe, but what I want you to do is when you look at God's affirmations for me, I want you just to assume that those are true. That is, that's who I am. Now, here's what happens. I say, that's who I am. I'm blameless. I'm spotless. I'm, I'm perfect in God's sight. I'm perfect through his redemptive power. And then you make a bad choice. And what do you say to yourself? Ah, there I go again. I just can't seem to get it right. I just, I try, but I just keep failing. I just keep making bad choices. No, don't talk to yourself like that. All you're doing when we talk to ourselves like that is reinforcing the bad picture. Yes, that's who I am. See there, I can never change. I'm just a bad, evil person. That's the earthly picture. No. You know what you say to yourself? You say, well, look at that. I can't believe I made a bad choice. That's not who I am. I'm God's product. I'm a product of God's handiwork. I'm spotless. I'm blameless. That's not me. What am I doing? The next time, I'll make the right choice. So what you affirm, you keep affirming and confirming that vision. You affirm it. You imprint it by repetition, and then you, in your self-talk, you actually confirm that that's who I am. Here's what I, here's, I don't want you to look at yourself as in this way. I want this vision, to, I want this vision, this, these affirmations to be present tense. I want you to say, that's who I am. You say, but that's not who I am. I'm, I'm being transformed. Okay, but, I, but in terms of who you are, that's the picture. That's the picture you're pursuing. I want you to assume, and here's the reason why. If you assume that you're in process, then you'll keep saying, okay, well, I'm still failing, but I'm going to get there someday. No, it just keeps chasing ahead of you because all you're doing is reinforcing the bad picture. Stop. You say, look at that. I can't believe it. I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I made a bad choice. Next time, I'll make the right choice. There are two parts to this. One is God's part. One is my part. And I don't transform myself. But the Spirit is there waiting, wanting to be invited. And I, I often frustrate the Spirit. I discourage the Spirit. No, we want the Spirit to move. This is the way I think we allow the Spirit to move in our lives. So those are the three things easily said. But that's the way I think we carry out our part. Thank you.